Uh, my name is Anders Johansen, and I'm an astrophysicist, and my research concerns the formation of planets. Uh, so I work from a theoretical point of view, and I try to understand the theory of planet formation all the way from, from micrometer-sized dust that orbits around young stars, and then all the way up to, uh, up to uh, planetary systems. And I'm very interested both in how to form our own solar system, which is actually very challenging, and I'm also interested in um, how to form the many exoplanets that are known to orbit around other stars. So today we know of more than 5,000 exoplanets around, uh, around other stars. And, and for me, this is a strong motivation to ask the question, how did they form? And did they form in the same way in the solar system? Or are there many other ways of, of forming planetary systems? Okay, so what I try to focus on when I do research is that I, I read many, many, many scientific papers. And then I try to find out uh, what is really known and what is not known. And sometimes what people don't know in the field is not always so clear because uh, people will say this is obvious or there's this explanation which everyone believes in. But sometimes you have to really think about, say, is this really obvious? Has anyone really tested this? Are there other ways of, of, of doing that? And, 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 and for me, the only way you can obtain this knowledge is really say, by reading a lot of papers and talking to a lot of people. Also, I'm a theorist, so I work on computer simulations, but I try to talk a lot to people who are observers, people who observe planets and stars. And I try to talk a lot to people who work in the, in the laboratory, people who some study meteorites from the, from the asteroid belt and ask them, what, what, what are you learning about planet formation? And I think it's important to take in all this information from all these different directions before I make up my mind about where I, what research project I want to work on and where I want to go next. So I actually... Now, uh, I, when I want to do a new research project, I think a lot about it before I even start. I think when I was early in my career, I would just run into a research project immediately. And sometimes I would work on something for half a year and I realized, oh no, th this was wrong from the beginning. There was, there was a wrong assumption from the beginning, or this is not the right explanation. But actually today, I, I like to think a lot more before I start. So I almost make a mental map of the whole project. And I try to really make sure that I so to say, sometimes I'm about shaking the tree. I try to criticize it all the time. Is there anything that's bad? Is there any reason why I shouldn't start this? And only when I'm really sure this is going to work out, then I will start working on it. Um, so I think this is a, the way for me to do effective research. I think I would say a lot of uh, a lot of a big challenge in research is to work on the right project because you can waste a lot of time working on the wrong project. A half a year, a whole year, it's a lot of time for a, a researcher. So uh, I think when it comes to effective research, my advice is really to, uh, to really think carefully, very, very carefully. Maybe take a month of really just thinking, is this what I want to do? What are the issues? What does this person say? What does this person say? Who's wrong? Who's right? Before I, before I go into the project. Hmm? Yeah, I think it would be a little bit similar to what I just said, uh, to really think carefully about projects before you start. Now, I can maybe mainly talk as a theorist about how I'd like to do a theory project. But I think really my advice would be to read a lot of papers and don't trust anything. Don't even trust your own supervisor because they may be wrong. Yeah. So you have to challenge everything and you have to really try to figure out what is known, what is not known, where can you make a difference. Uh, uh, and then uh, in order to do that, you really need to, to read a lot of papers, go to a lot of conferences also. I think sometimes the young people go to fewer and fewer conferences and I think it, it's, it's bad because you're missing out on interaction with, with other people. And then uh, really, yes, talk to people from, if you're a theorist like me, talk to people who are observers, talk to people who work in the lab and then say the same if you're an observer or a lab person, talk to the two other groups and, and, and try to really figure out uh, what, are the, what are the unknowns in this field, what is the potential new direction to we'll go into. I also think that sometimes um, what is not known in a field is because there's no method de developed for that now. It may be that there's no computer code that can solve a specific problem. That, that's an experience I have from, from, from a theory. And then it's really worthwhile to think about maybe you can be the first to make th that method. And then you can actually break into a whole new area where people have just said, this is like that, but it's impossible to simulate or to calculate, but, but if you can be the first to do that, then there are really options to make a big difference.